Lately, there have been some questions surfacing on NEAR protocol. So that's what we're going to do today. In this video, we will cover the common questions such as what is NEAR? The features of the NEAR token, the current challenges, what does the future hold for the project? Before we answer all these questions, if you are new here, hello! CoinGecko is the world's largest independent cryptocurrency data aggregator. If you would like to stay updated on all things crypto, make sure to click on that subscribe button, turn on the notification, and follow us on all of our social media platforms linked below. Let's begin. NEAR Protocol is a sharded, delegated, proof-of-stake blockchain with the same smart contract functionality we see in other popular Layer 1 chains. Back in 2018, NEAR was founded by two tech enthusiasts, Alexander Skidinov, a former Microsoft software developer, and Ilya Polushkin, a former engineer manager at Google Research. The two of them managed to raise over 200 million US dollars from prominent venture capitalist funds such as Three Arrows Capital, A16Z, Dragonfly Capital, Coinbase Ventures, and more. So why create NEAR? NEAR attempts to tackle the blockchain trilemma of security, scalability, and decentralization by combining and reiterating on the best features of other chains, on top of having a strong focus on user and developer friendliness, as well as interoperability. With the goal of achieving mainstream adoption in mind, the focus was on creating a user-friendly platform that differentiates NEAR from other Layer 1 chains. How is NEAR different? I know, I can hear the question running through your mind. Here are some examples. It has a default human readable address. NEAR has a user-friendly web wallet where no extensions are needed, with the option to set up or recover an account via email or mobile for convenience. This option can be disabled should a user wish to. Low transaction fees, typically less than 0.01 US dollars. Fast transactions with a two second finality. NEAR features sharding as its solution is scaling its blockchain. If you are new to the concept of sharding, it is essentially a technique used to split a single data set across multiple databases, allowing for parallel processing and a more balanced distribution of the network according to the computational resources available. This is essentially what ETH 2.0 will be introducing to. NEAR has its own two take on sharding, the Nightshade. Nightchain is designed to enable dynamic sharding having no cap on the number of shards, while at the same time being able to create and merge shards according to the computational needs required by the network at any given time. In theory, this would make NEAR's transaction throughput able to scale higher than Ethereum 2.0, whose throughput comes in about 100,000 transactions per second. Now let's talk about the interoperability of the NEAR protocol. Aurora is an EVM built by the NEAR protocol team on the NEAR blockchain. Aurora is unique in that it is a blockchain that runs as a smart contract on the NEAR blockchain. Aurora provides an Ethereum Layer 2-like experience for both users and developers on NEAR. It is fully interoperable with Ethereum and all its different wallets and tools. This introduces a familiar environment to developers, but with the advantage of the superior scalability and super low-cost transactions offered by NEAR. Another project building on NEAR, which further increases NEAR's multi-chain interoperability, is Octopus Network. Octopus Network is an open, permissionless, multi-chain interoperable network for launching substrate-based app chains. Let's talk about NEAR's ecosystem metrics. Most of NEAR's key ecosystem metrics, such as total value locked and daily transactions, have seen an uptick recently and are on a steady uptrend. According to Defalama, NEAR has a TVL of slightly over 900 million as of January 17th. As Aurora runs as a smart contract on NEAR, TVL on Aurora is also included in this metric. Transfers of ERC20 tokens to the NEAR blockchain also saw a recent uptick, with the Rainbow Bridge weekly TVL percentage change at plus 163%, far ahead of the other bridges. In addition to that, the daily creation of new accounts also recently saw a significant spike to almost 400,000, along with a stepwise increase in daily transactions to over 1 million after a slow trend up from the fourth quarter 2021. 
Looking at all these statistics, it almost seems like Nier has no flaws or challenges. But unfortunately, I'm going to burst your bubble and discuss just that. The Nier token is often used to pay transaction fees, used as collateral for data storage on the blockchain, and is also used to compensate a number of blockchain stakeholders. Recently, tokens of Nier jumped 23% to $10.80 when developers revealed an interface with Terra, a decentralized payment network. The amazingly fast transactions and low fees of NIR do not make up for one thing, decentralization. According to the NIR mainnet explorer, the NIR blockchain currently has 89 validators. There is a threshold that depends on the total amount staked by the other validators present, and the threshold sits at just over 600,000 NIR tokens, which equates to almost 900,000 at the time of writing. What this means is the cost reflects a high barrier to entry. Though delegation of any amount is possible, this also does not address the problem of centralization, as the top nodes which hold the most stakes still have outsized share of the network. The top six nodes now cumulatively own over 33% of the total near stake. The near token is also notably absent from US exchanges, despite being listed on most other major exchanges. This presents an obstacle for users and investors from the US where a large number of crypto early adopters reside. Another challenge is that several dozen or so-called dApps available are still comparatively few relative to both NIR's market capitalization and the 250 plus projects which are officially listed as building on NIR or Aurora. Most users seem to reside on Aurora, and having most of the adoption happening on Aurora somewhat diminishes the impact of the features and dApps implemented on Near itself. Fortunately, plans to further scale and increase decentralization exists in Near's roadmap. The main upgrades relate to the implementation of the various phases of Nightshade, which brings back the focus on dynamic resharding and increasing validator nodes. Nightshade is planning to be deployed in stages 0 to 3. In phase zero, the network will be split into four shards, with validators still having to track all shards to maintain security. Phase one focuses on increasing decentralization by introducing chunk-only producers, which are validators who validate chunks on a specific shard. The aim of phase two is to increase accessibility for validators. This phase will eliminate the need for validators to track all shards. Phase three is when the dynamic resharding will be completed for near. This removes the ceiling for scaling, as well as increases the resilience of the network to usage spikes. And that's a wrap for NIR protocol. As we can see from NIR's aggressive roadmap for Nightshade, expectations have been set high. Time will tell if the NIR team is able to deliver their roadmap according to schedule, or if the project will face similar hurdles and delays as a long-awaited Ethereum 2.0. In the coming months, it will be crucial for NIR to further decentralize in order to gain legitimacy in the eyes of the crypto community. Do subscribe to CoinGecko and turn on your notifications for future alpha. What are your thoughts on the NIR protocol? Drop your thoughts in the comments.